Oh, man, the Miami Dolphins. Hopefully the wait was worth it. But seriously, they fired Brian Flores, as they should have. Three years, no playoffs, and he's a fucking idiot. For yet some reason, Chris Greer, the general manager, still has a job, even though he's the same guy that hired the failure that was Brian Flores, the failure that was Adam Gase. Don't ask me why Chris Greer was allowed to stick around to have a third opportunity to hire a head coach. That's something Stephen Ross has got to answer for, like, does Chris Greer give it to him in a way that he likes? Does Chris Greer have, you know, compromising photos of Ross or the Ross family? That's what I personally would like to know. But, you know, you look at this Miami Dolphins job and you wonder, like, just how appealing it is. Like, is it the most appealing job out there? Maybe that depends on whether or not you believe in Tua. I don't know that it was. I certainly don't think it was the least appealing of the jobs out there. Because huh? you talk about... You can be down in the nice weather in Miami. You have no state income tax. Like you, There are benefits to being down in Miami, being down in Florida. You also look at and you say, okay, the AFC East, like, yes, you still have the Patriots there, but they're not quite the same Patriots of days gone by. The Bills are, you know, the standard bearers right now in that division, but they're not insurmountable. They can't even get past the Chiefs in the playoffs and who knows what you got with the Jets. You've got, you know, some pieces there, I guess. Like Jalen Waddle certainly looks like he's the real deal. Um, but there's the question about what is Tua and who is Tua and what is Tua going to be able to do. But not surprisingly, the Miami Dolphins were going to go into this offseason looking for somebody on the offensive side of the ball. And that makes sense because They've already potentially done their damage by first drafting Tua over Justin Herbert and then doubling down last year and not taking one of the other quarterbacks. You know, Time will tell how that bears out, which is, well, again, why Chris Greer's ass should have been shown the door. But you need a guy that could get the most out of Tua. And I've got to say, like, of all the teams, it was the Miami Dolphins that actually brought the first little bit of diversity into this offseason's head coaching carousel. Oh yes, Mike McDaniel is not a pure pasty face like me, I promise you. He's a biracial man. He's got black ancestry, white ancestry. You know, we use the old one drop rule, like he counts. Might not look quite the same as Lovey Smith, but it counts, okay? We take progress wherever the fuck we can get it. It's weird that he was the first one, but damn it, whatever. I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm a Mike McDaniel fan. I think the dude's got this personality that just can connect with people. I think he's got a really good offensive mind. He comes from that kind of Shanahan McVay coaching tree that has produced some recent success here. You know, yes, you could say, well, how much play calling was he really doing under Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco? He was only offensive coordinator for like one year. Like, how much is there, how much experience does he really have? Is he really cut out for? I'll tell you what. Sometimes you just don't know until these guys get an opportunity. And they either have it or they don't. But when you hear like a Mike McDaniel speak, there's a couple of things that stand out. One, this dude's got some fucking personality. He's got some good perspective. He's a little refreshing. That is not a dumb question. Like, you can look up some of the press conferences for Mike McDaniel, and they're fucking comedy. I love them. So Miami, looking for some personality, looking for somebody a little bit different for that locker room, for that organization to work with Tua, they got that dude in Mike McDaniel. And I have to imagine, whereas initially some Dolphins fans are like, I don't know about this. I bet you more and more as they do more research and they pay more attention to him and they learn more about Mike McDaniel, they're fucking somewhat at least excited about this, as they should be. Now look, he could absolutely be an unmitigated disaster down there in Miami, which could somewhat owe to like investing more time into it when it's not worth it, or just his personality does not resonate, does not connect with the players, or the Dolphins got themselves the right dude. 
They've got the dude that could potentially help develop Tua to a point where he's worth meriting a conversation around a second contract. Where you got this Dolphins team is in playoff contention. Like, there's no question he comes from very strong offensive background. Very strong offensive credentials. That's at least somewhat exciting. And that's what the Dolphins needed. Because when you look at the culture of the past few years, and you've seen this recently with the lawsuit and stuff, it's like, as I talked about before, Brian Flores is a bad face to have on a very worthy cause. Almost like a crooked champion. Like, here's a guy that never even had to be a defensive coordinator and got his first head coaching job when he was like 38. So what the fuck is he talking about? Like, talk to Eric Bieniemy and see how this process works for him. Talk to Jim Caldwell, Leslie Frazier, Todd Bowles, Byron Leftwich if you want to go there. Like, these are other guys you could look at and say, these guys got fucked. David Culley, one year down in Houston, he got fucked. Brian Flores fucked himself. He's a fucking idiot. He couldn't keep an offensive staff to save his goddamn life. He botched horribly his handling of Tua Tagovailoa the past two seasons. His defenses weren't that damn great. And he threw everything under the bus to try and get to the damn playoffs, and he couldn't even fucking execute that. But it's everybody else's fault, except he wasn't ready. And I'm sorry, but if you're sitting there and saying, well, a guy like Brian Flores deserved more time, well, then you should be okay with Mike McDaniel getting the head coaching opportunity here, because at least... He was an offensive coordinator, at least in name, for a year. At least he was. Now, how much function that really had, similar to Brian Flores as a linebacker's coach in New England, fair question. But when you look at San Francisco's system, and you look at what that could mean for Tua, what that could look for the Dolphins' offense, like, I'd be excited as hell to see what they could do with a Jalen Waddle. Assuming they retain a Mike Kosicki, like I'd be excited as hell to see what they could get, what Mike McDaniel could get out of a Mike Kosicki. I'd also be interested to see how they'll be able to develop a running game that better supports Tua, which allows you to emphasize strengths of Tua, minimize weaknesses of Tua. That makes that offense a little bit more dangerous. Now, if you got a 49ers level offense where you said, hey, we can really run the ball, and we got two weapons on offense that we get the ball in their hands. They can make some fucking damage happen. We just got to kind of minimize the impact of our quarterback. Like, you can win plenty of games. It doesn't necessarily make you a championship contender, but damn it, it buys you some time until you can find out truly whether Tua is the guy or not. Now, you might be saying, well, it sounds like you're not a believer. No, I'm not necessarily a believer in Tua, but I don't think his career is over. I still think there is time. You're still on that rookie contract. you got to do what you can to find out. And at least to the Dolphins' credit, they've hired somebody that I think is well-suited to work with Tua and get more out of Tua and put him in better situations to succeed that actually knows what the hell he's doing on the offensive side of the ball. That's actually the benefit here. The big benefit is instead of Brian Flores' this bozo ass going through an offensive coordinator every single year, a new one, and changing the system and changing what you do. Now you've got a Mike McDaniel there. The offensive system, the philosophy, is going to stay relatively the same for however long you have Tua or the next quarterback. That's a positive. It's going to bring stability and consistency for a quarterback and an offense that really badly needed it. Like I said, I'd love to see what they're going to do with Jalen Waddle now. Granted, he's not a Debo Samuel type of talent, but Waddle is an explosive threat in and of itself who you could do some of those Debo-like things with him. Like, that guy could be in store for a huge 2022. And certainly Gasicki is no George Kittle, but, you know, Gasicki is a decent weapon as a pass catcher, and playing in a system that does better to feature the tight end, I can't wait to see what McDaniel working with somebody like a Gasicki or whoever else is fucking playing tight end in Miami is going to be able to do. Now, obviously, the staff that he hires, in particular on the defensive side of the ball, is going to matter here. But Dolphins fans, at least you got somebody with a decent personality. Somebody that's not so damn dry and such a jackass. Like, you even saw when he was doing, like, the walkthrough and he went to the Dolphins facility for the first time. Like, you could see the appreciation for history, the appreciation and understanding of the game. You know, the talking about the Dolphins' legacy of the past. Like, this guy has all of that. 
And if nothing else, you're at least going to have some entertaining press conferences the next couple of years, and I look forward to that. But when you look at the fact that the 49ers were able to get to an NFC Championship game, having to hide their fucking quarterback, yes, you could say that was entirely due to their defense, but that's not entirely true either. Like that offense at times was able to do things. Jimmy G's handoff game was on point. But they were able to develop guys like Debo and George Kittle, and McDaniel was a part of that. So yeah, if I was a Dolphins fan, maybe it wasn't the biggest and most obvious name on the market, but as you've gotten used to the concept and used to the thought, I'd have to imagine you're pretty excited about it right now. And you should be. We should all be Mike McDaniel stands. He is the man! He is the one that finally brought some diversity to this NFL head coaching carousel this offseason. Yes, yes, he did. He was the one.